think, why do you think the teachers unions specifically have been hostile? Well, if you go to the NEA's website, which we're, we can, we can go to the NEA's website and you see their objectives. They're no longer hiding it. Really? Let me make sure my microphone is where it needs to be. I hear you. But, yeah. But okay. They're no longer hiding um, their objectives, pure social justice all the way across the board. NEA. NEA. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. National Education Association. Okay. And people will say, oh, well, we don't have a teacher's union here. No, we have an association. And if you go down to the bottom of the NEA's page, it says type in your, find your affiliate. You mm -hmm. type in our state, then it's almost the exact same website. Oh, really? So it's just kind of carbon copied everywhere? Right. Purpose. Okay. I'm going to, maybe I'll, maybe I'll share the screen while we're talking yeah. about it. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, let me just get in here and do that share screen just this one okay what do you see right now do you just see the yeah purpose the... and power and community okay so this is the national education association mm -hmm. and... becky pringle is really kind of a piece of work which one is that is she one of these folks yeah she's the one in the red with the black buttons okay right here yes yeah Becky Pringle, she's the president? Right. And she is one who's openly said, um, she she was talking about all the groups she's advocating for, and the one that didn't come across was the white male. Oh. Of all of the groups. <laughs> like, Yeah, it's not too surprising, I suppose. Going, How is anyone swallowing this? So it's... if you go to advocating for change. Let's see. Oh, oh gosh, that's a, mm -hmm. that's a buzz. There you go. Crazy. Yeah. Right. For the public schools, all children deserve fund public education. And they've got their fist up. Right. I want to check something. Say more about this. I'm going to mute myself real quick. Sure. Okay. So yeah, they have their fists up. They have the Maoist fist. But what's interesting is as I'm going and um, talking to parents in what we call a cottage meeting, right? So many of them have no idea who Mao Zedong is. They have no idea that what a cultural revolution entails. Mm. Um, Ooh, wow. I have, We've got, yeah. look at that. Dismantle. Dismantle unjust systems. And they're fighting and fighting. This right. is, what a strange theme for education. Isn't right? that strange? It's really, I find it extremely disturbing. Yeah. Um, Ed want, Justice? Yeah. Ed Justice. NEA is growing the movement to win education justice for students. Okay. One oh, of my big concerns is how justice. are they defining justice? Do they, do they go into it some more? Let's see. So, wow. That's awesome. This is the, this is the national education association. Right? <laughs> I don't know. It's not funny. I don't Look want at to art laugh for at activism. It, where, where does it say that? Art it's, for activism. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Art for activism. Art has the power to evoke emotion and deepen the impact of the movement. Explore art from NEA to use in your activism. No more stolen sisters. Okay. We make the future. Huh. Yeah. Safety, Just... love, and belonging. I mean, these are nice. Some of the things are nice, but then they've got like the, you know, they are. Reminds... If, if you don't know what you're looking at, right? If you don't yeah, understand yeah. that belonging means freedom to that. learn, but what is it freedom from? What is what's been freedom to learn is this is pretty... no quote unquote book banning. That's what oh, to learn is. that's why oh. it's the book there. Yeah, okay, I see. So they don't want they want you to have freedom to teach your kids porn in schools, right? Oh, okay. Huh. One of the interesting things that I've seen a lot of pop-ups like in community groups are come to our art day, come and come and do art with us. Wow. And if you follow, if you click on the links, a lot of these art, these children's things, arts events these have, have an links. agenda. Oh, okay. Oh, the events. Yeah. I noticed right. that all of, almost all the people in the art are black too. Right. 
Well, they're definitely not white. No, they're not. There's some like some Muslim headdresses and stuff. There is. So defending so, LGBTQ plus inclusion. Right. You can Let's go see. ahead and click on click on it and you can Yeah, I'm just well, randomly looking at this. Wow, look at these people. This is the National Education Association. At least advocating one of them. for for change racial social justice tools. Right. Wow, and at least one of them is a former man. Well, this this looks like two. a male, and this one looks like a male. I don't know. That's why I said at least one. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not positive, and so I try to keep it as neutral as I can. That is that is hard about running for an election to just be as neutral as possible and to right. leave, not well, comment on certain things. Yeah, and I try to stay neutral. Also, like I don't know these people, and I don't know their story. I just know that right. they're being they're being used as political. Tools. So they might be Absolutely. lovely people who have their own issues and their own what they've how they've come to be in the situation that they're in. I'm not judging the individuals, but I am seeing their identities or their outward appearance being politicized, which is really where right. it's becoming alarming. And he's holding a sign that says women. And can we can we talk about the fact that um, <laughs> the NEA is for K-12 and none of these are ch children? Oh, this is a K-12 organization. Yeah. Yes. Um, everything is, everything is K-12 and it's just stand against bias and hate. Let's see. Hmm. I'm listening. I wonder what to the pledge is. Oh, I don't even. Support LGBTQ plus students and educators. We all deserve the right to live, work, and thrive, no matter our color, immigration status, or sexual orientation and gender identities. No exceptions. Okay. Well, I mean, I don't, we do. I'm, that's not terrible, I guess. I'm not sure how I feel about the immigration status. Yeah, that's a little strange. I don't know what's being done there. It feels like there's something overtly political about all of it. Well, when I was in Texas, that I went to after our last talk, when I was in Texas, a teacher had told me that there's a group, I think it's called SOAR, but I can't re remember exactly. Um, but she said that the kids will go up at the beginning of the month mm -hmm. to the office and they'll yeah. get checks for $800. What? Um, because they're supposed to be students on their own, but they're not. They're coming here with families, but every kid in the family gets their SOAR amount. This is the um, illegal immigrant. Is that yes. what you're talking about? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh. Wow. So this as a a pledge, this just right. seems very meaningless. It's very vague. It's like these if these didn't well in the if you couldn't see the 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 political propaganda behind it, you would just see kind of vaguely, you know, this is platitudes. Right. But also look at this. But today, certain politicians are pushing laws that restrict yeah. our freedoms and divide us. Yeah, you are. Your your groups are doing that. <laughs> your groups are taking our kids. Yeah. I, I just want to give you this example. I had a mom who reached out to me earlier in the week. And it was really disturbing because these are the same people who at the beginning of the of the year, the teachers asked for their pronouns. And in two separate schools here, in two separate schools, when the parents reached out, because I did have a group go in and, and ask about it. Mm -hmm. When the parents reached out, they said, oh, this was a complete mistake. A substitute just didn't pass on the memo. And so nobody knew. But in two schools, they said the exact same thing. Then I was talking to a friend who's a teacher on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's the same answer they're supposed to give as well. Mm. So... Now the teacher, the same teacher is passing out assignments on rainbow colored paper. Hmm. So a seventh grade boy, because seventh grade boys are blunt and kind of immature and whatever else he said, I don't want to do my assignment on rainbow paper. Hmm. That's gay. That's what the kids said. Right. Okay. So this kid who's never been in trouble is kicked out of class. Oh, wow. Just for being completely intolerant and out. labeling something. Hmm. So, um, so then the, the mother calls me and she's desperate and she's just like, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Our kid is not allowed to stand for our values. 
Yeah. So. Wow. That's but I learned about this from Abigail Schreier's. Um, she just did an she just did an interview, I think, this morning with Unheard. Okay. And they were saying that this all changed in 2014 when Obama sent out a dear colleagues letter. And what his dear colleagues letter said specifically was that too many kids of color were being expelled. This is and this so, thing here. Yes. That right. we're looking at. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So black girls are five. times more can I be honest here though sure I have seen so much bitterness and so much anger and so much inherent hatred of anyone not part of your group or your collective Mm. from minority kids well they're being encouraged to think that way exactly they're being empowered Mm mm-hmm what is this fist up in the air? They're being yeah. empowered. This was and- gender empowerment, I think, is what this this tool for justice. It was I clicked on this word gender empowerment. And yeah. I was wondering what that meant. I uh, LGBT support and protection too. I'm, I'm interested in what all these things are, but uh, I find gender empowerment really upsetting when these are kids because kids will believe whatever that teacher tells them to believe. Like if you have just a cool teacher who who talks to you, maybe gives you candy, is super mm-hmm. enthusiastic, then you will fall for anything that they tell you, which is why a teacher has such a responsibility to keep well, it neutral. Yeah, absolutely. And these statements, these are concerning if these statistics are true, but it's not a straight line between these and just stop suspending them or just stop it's like, can we look at what might be causing this? What's going right. on that could be causing this? And maybe it's uh, some of your own policies. Like, has this maybe. increased since we've started doing this race teaching that we're doing? I wonder about We have about affinity that. groups. Are, are they putting kids in affinity groups? Yes. They are. They are. So wow. we have affinity groups. One is called the Eagle Project. And I was talking to a teacher and they said, well, what's what's really wrong with it and I said well I think that's something that that is labeled becoming visible Hmm. is telling two messages one telling the kid that they weren't visible until they adopted their cultural background and two telling the kids who aren't that they aren't as important it's interesting to me that they lump women girls and lgbtq people they're always lumping. They That's they need the one group to be against. Oh wow! Here's a pronoun guide. Oh my gosh, this is a subject that's really, really interesting right? to me. See more. Download a PDF of the pronouns. Uh, so, pronouns are words that function in the place of a name. Instead of saying, "My brother Steve is coming to pick me up in Steve's car," and we're going to Steve's favorite restaurant, a person could say instead, "His car, his favorite restaurant." Okay, so giving you a primer here. Men males have typically been referred to using he, him, his, and women females by using she, her, hers. We likely all grew up assuming we knew someone's pronouns just by looking at them or knowing their gender, but that just, that isn't the case. In an effort to be more affirming of all, it is important to get out of the habit of assuming pronouns. Plural pronouns are becoming more widely accepted as gender neutral singular pronouns. It is grammatically correct. They're just stating it is grammatically correct to use singular they to refer to a singular person of unknown gender or to a non-binary person who does not feel gendered pronouns work for them. It, right. They don't say who says it's like, grammatically correct. Exactly. They're they're teaching these things as if they're facts. Yeah. That's probably the most frustrating thing to me. If you said some people believe I would say it's be, okay, grammatically fine. questionable. Right. But they're changing the language. Always use the pronouns of the individual once they have told you what pronouns they use. And there's this list. They've got the Z-Zimzers. Right. And kindly ask if the person uses one set. This is grammatically incorrect here. I don't understand. This is this is something that kind of drives me a little nuts is that I use this kind of pronouns. What you're actually, what you're doing is making a request for other people to use those when they talk about you. Right. It's not you using them. But anyway, I guess we could just, this is something that kind of frustrates me a lot. I don't want to get, I don't want to go on a rant. But these, this is what teachers are being taught to do. Yeah. And everybody's being taught to do these 
absolute usurpings of reality. Um, For non -use this, in this is what I've come to the conclusion. And I might've said this last time, but I've really been thinking about what is dignity mm -hmm. and dignity. You lose your dignity when you agree to lie to yourself. Hmm. When you agree to lose for, for anyone. So can a homeless person be dignified? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. If they know the, the position they are on in life and they're looking at how they can improve or not, but they at least recognize that that's who they are. And that's so interesting to me because that's we used right. to say that the one thing you can't take away from a person is their dignity. Yeah. And now they're literally, they're asking they're, you to give it up. They're not really asking. Yeah. Yeah. This is, <laughs> are we still in the, the women and girls section? I just have to check. Okay. Yeah. We're still in the women and girls section, but we just quickly like switched off and went into pronouns. And right. I'm curious what this means here. Equitable dress code codes missing from schools. This is about how dress codes hurt LGBT people. So I'm curious about that. Okay. Equitable dress codes missing from schools. Nearly all K through 12 public school districts have restrictive dress codes that disproportionately impact female students, students of color and LGBTQ students. Okay. They're teaching these kids to focus on things that don't matter very much and to, and I don't mean focus, I mean, obsess. Oh, okay, one of the things Abigail Schreier says is so many kids who are in therapy don't need to be. Yeah. Oh, I agree with that completely. I've been saying that for a long time. I don't believe in therapy for kids for the most part. I think there are exceptions, but I just think people go too quickly to well, that's a therapist when there's something going on with their kid. That's someone like me who grew up the way that I did. I had a therapist Mm -hmm. most the same therapist for most of my life and he was my one person mm -hmm. but the thing is is he gave me this toolbox yeah. he gave me the tools and, and there was a point where I graduated from it and he said you just don't need therapy anymore that's great well it seems you like know? that's one of those exceptions and you did have a particularly yes. unique story I right. also grew up with therapists I was put in therapy when I was in fourth grade and I stayed in it throughout the rest of school and it was really difficult for me I don't think it, it was appropriate at all and it made okay. me incredibly uncomfortable. Um, so it, so I, I, even at yeah. that time, it wasn't, some therapy wasn't beneficial. Uh, yeah, that's, that was my sense of it for, for myself, the discomfort that I felt, felt being put in those situations as a kid. Right. Um, but, but also I just don't, I, I mean, I had this, I, this, when my girls were, um, let's see, I guess they were like four and six when I got divorced from their father. And I think divorce is hard for kids. I think it's not, it's definitely not optimal to be in a divorced family and, and to have a single parent. And I think that there was difficulty with that separation and it was just a hard thing. And there were people who suggested that I put them in therapy to deal with it. And I thought, no, I don't want to have them delve deep and focus on what is hurt i want them to focus on what helps and let's make life productive and joyful and and focus on strength and to have a small kid sit and do a lot of deep introspection on difficulty and pain seems like you could really easily start identifying with the wrong i guess the wrong things in life See, and I, I think that what the difference between your experience and mine is that I didn't have a person, I didn't have parents that I could turn to. Mm -hmm. But if you do have parents, your parents should be the first and foremost people in, in the child's life. Mm -hmm. That that's well, really this is where we are. I mean, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's true that not everybody has parents that are equipped to do that true. kind of thing. But I'm not convinced that the modern counseling profession as it is now is has the best tools to help kids and families i think that the diagnostic and and medical framework is has been created for people with more profound psychiatric illness and it's not very well equipped to help people with more developmental um i guess 
issues more it's not it's not the supportive process partner that i think people really need in those circumstances i think it comes at it from a different framework well it's because they're taught to cut um catastrophize right yeah well and when you're a when you're a, a hammer everything looks like a nail right absolutely so. A politically motivated fake moral panic. Oh, key narratives. Well, Interest, this is interesting is what... because it's more of that outrage stuff. It's more right. of just communicating outrage to kids. And I don't know. This this stuff, even just putting this on the screen and having a conversation about this, it it feels like um I don't want to promote something that just makes people angry either. Like, right. I don't want to do narrative counter narrative. Like here, here's something that you should be angry about. I'm angry about this. Yeah. Uh, but, but this is what's shocking is that this is the, what is, what is NEA? Is it the, is it, are all National teachers Education part of this? Association. Yeah. But is, is it, is it like an opt-in thing that teachers can choose to be a part of, or is it something that they're all sort a part of, of? I mean, it's, it's the NEA. So yes, you can, you can choose to be a part, but it is it's your support. Okay. About so, NEA. I want to see this about sure. NEA purpose and power, our mission, our leaders, our members. Okay. Who's their members. We support students in all roles. All these people. Okay. They look pretty fired up. Looks, looks like a religious ceremony, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Students, educators, workers, allies, allies. We are, we all have a home and right. reunion. Okay. So. See, and I, I think it's students. important to look through this stuff, not to get mad, but to recognize the projection. Look, it's just all social justice ideology. The yes. whole thing. And look, it's struggling. Yes. We're struggling. We're fighting. We're activists. Well, this you've heard really... that idea that you can't have joy, so white people can't supposedly can't have joy. Oh, I heard that about laughter. Um, any kind did you of see joy. that thing about laughter is a conservative thing now? Oh, that's fine. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I... <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, no, advocating but... for change. What they're saying is that joy, which I have a very specific belief about joy. Mm -hmm. um but what they say with joy is that you can't have joy if it's not in resistance power power oh, yeah. dismantle unjust but they're defining what's unjust okay so banning assault weapons well people don't have guns in school or they shouldn't they're already banned right in school no so this no, is no, banned no. them there's, there's in... a lot of teachers there's a lot of teachers who, who carry. carry guns okay mm -hmm. okay don't cut education in a final deal. Okay, I don't know anything about that. It's just about money, funding. Right. Expand full service community schools. What's a full service community school? Oh boy. What's this? Community schools have your medical care in the school. Oh my gosh. They have your counseling in the school. Um, oh and access to health care, mental health care, and food. Can you highlight that high quality? So high quality is just um, new speaker hijacking of a woke education, meaning oh, really? okay. that they will have trends. So that's actually a term of art. So high quality is not just a vague thing. It's really means no. something specific. So we just, we just passed a bill that is high quality daycare. And oh, okay. it, it means that they will be teaching anti-racism and they will be teaching gender fluidity. That's what that means. Schoolers. Okay. So yes. it's like SEL kind of stuff. Yes. Yes. So some people will say, I was talking to a teacher yesterday who said, I teach SEL. It's super boring, but it's not doing what you're saying. Well, I spent some time on Castle's website yesterday and it talks about how um, SEL is incrementally put into schools. So it starts off with, uh, oh, this is boring. Nobody cares, but there's nothing to be upset about. Mm -hmm. But then if you spend any more time and you type in equity on SEL page, it's all the same. Yeah. It's all, it all points to gender. Interesting. Well, this, this is really concerning access to healthcare, mental healthcare. And we were just talking about how therapy is not appropriate for kids right. necessarily the way that it's being done. And 
I think Abigail Schreier's book is really timely and I'm right. looking forward to reading it. I already agree with a lot of the things I've heard her say in the interviews that I've been listening to. Um, right. But healthcare also, that is interesting because well, we saw this food. really, well, what does healthcare mean though? Does this mean that they're going to give your kid shots and yeah. they, that they get to administer those depending on whether they think that's appropriate and you no longer have, I've already heard that um, there are lots of parents who've been upset about their kids who are on either a selective vaccine schedule or are choosing to not get certain shots that have had their kids uh, receive vaccines when they're at school because they do these vaccine drives like they'll do like a flu right. drive a flu shot drive i probably do COVID. i don't know well and they do more than that they'll bring them in with um they bring them in with pizza they get a party oh so they actually shot. yeah reward. well i was thinking about that too like how did how did we all i can remember right. being a kid and being so proud mm -hmm. of the shot on my arm and it was because i got told i, I you ex it's so interesting you experience pain you right. do something that hurts and then you get told how brave you are and then you get a lollipop too and then your mom takes you to mcdonald's or whatever and so it's this whole it's really quite um quite a grooming process isn't it yes where we all end up with this warm fuzzy feeling about this whole class of pharmaceuticals instead of evaluating the way we would evaluate other medicines yeah so if there's a pizza party oh that's, yeah yeah yeah. So there's, there's pizza parties. There's, um, the end, the end game. Again, we might've talked about that before, but is, is that monoculture? So mm -hmm. that's the point of schools. Schools are here to create monocultures. Then you have to ask, okay, is a monoculture a ter terrible thing? Is multiculturalism a better solution? Because that's, that's the whole immigrant rights, right? So immigrants shouldn't have to learn English immigrants. Mm -hmm. And that's that is a discussion to have so personally i believe that we should have common values in mm -hmm. the same country otherwise things that are like happening in new york where a family owns a home and a bunch of squatters move in and then the person who owns the home gets arrested for trying to kick the squatters out mm -hmm. that's what happens when you have no respect for culture or customs mm -hmm. or even just just responsibility or or respect just for another human being right and no respect for property rights mm -hmm. so um well i'm gonna stop the share for now yeah i think christine's gonna join us in a minute awesome. i want to go and check out some of the pat uh the 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 chat room here okay chat thread so hi trev is on music glad you're here um they can use that megaphone protester look because it's 50 years old. Okay. Um, Danny. Hey, Danny. I'm glad you're here. Yeah. I, I like these conversations too. She says, I like the conversations you and Carib have. <laughs> um, Trebizon music says cults love platitudes. I was in one once and can't believe I needed Jim, Jim Lindsay to help me see how cultish it all is. Yeah. He's really good at that. Mm -hmm. Hi, Ninja Kitty. I'm glad you're here too. And let's see, a guy in his room says, I just applied for a job and there was nine different options for pronouns, including who, who, and AM. Interesting. Yeah, I saw, I think it was Chanel Fall was sharing that she had, um, she had to fill out some paperwork for a medical visit and they didn't allow an option to not give pronouns. So you have to specify pronouns. I thought that was pretty, um, pretty frustrating. We need a parallel culture. Yeah. We need to be willing to go to do things with, probably without insurance, you know, like we need to be able to, if you need a counselor for real reasons, pay somebody without insurance. You mm -hmm. need to. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Your health better. All of those things we need to be doing on a parallel culture. Yeah. The medical system is really concerning right now. Hey, Christine. <laughs> Oh, hello. Glad How you're here. You? Good. I'm We've so just been sorry. talking about the NEA, the National Education Association. Oh, yes. Okay. Are you yes, familiar yes. with uh, with this group? Yes, a little bit. It's like our National Teachers Union. And yes. It's yes. pretty woke. It's incredibly yes. woke. Yes, yes. 
pure activism all the way through. All right. And um, Ninja Kitty says uh, he doesn't see links for you, Carrie. So what would you like to have him post in the um, chat? Oh, he can go at Carib Marcel. That's fine. If they want to, I can definitely use the numbers on Carrie for Utah Kids, but it's really just a political page. So, mm -hmm. Cool. We're just kind of checking in with the chat now. Uh, 97 okay. cents says laughter is conservative and football is liberal now. <laughs> yeah it's true it's so funny um 97 cents also says is this just the flip side of values-based education no i'm not exactly sure is that another term of art well maybe mm. I, I i'm not exactly sure either i i think that it depends on who's saying values so a huge part of my campaign is restore american excellence you have to wonder why we had a generation who would pretend that they were old enough to go to war mm. because they, they believed in something. I was just interviewing a young man. I'll be putting it up on Sunday, but um, he got out of Antifa. I highly recommend talking to him. Mm. So um, I'll send you his information if you want. Oh, we may be interested in having him for critical therapy antidote actually. Mm -hmm. And when he's talking, he's, he talks about how, this generation is just completely hopeless mm -hmm. and they have been taught their, their education is means. That's what they think in. They think in means and mm -hmm. that's, that's as far as it goes and made my eyes pop out. <laughs> I just thought that's not the way I teach, but okay. <laughs> um, but the fact that they have so little hope and then you look at what the objective is of school you can't deny it. That's what's so shocking. I had friends who were at the United Nations this week and the same thing, or I guess last week, they said, you can't deny it. They were, they've were they never been more blunt in what their objectives are than they are right now, mm -hmm. which is global citizenship. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need to tear down America. We need to have no bastion of hope. When you, when you think about a book like um, um, Brave New World, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. At, at least in Brave New World, there's this little tiny commune of we can live the way we want to live, a commune of liberty. But what we're getting is not, is there's no liberty. And what mm -hmm. we're getting as we um, embrace kind of school choice, if we embrace school choice with funding, we could be sacrificing liberty in the process. Mm -hmm. Most of the people who are doing that don't believe that that's the case. Some do, but um, but it really does seem like they they want to make sure that we are a global monoculture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was just speaking with Deb Philman a week or so ago, and she's an advocate of school abolition, public school abolition, government school abolition, not education abolition. She wants it to go private. She wants people to handle it privately and not through the government, hmm. and that sounded really strong when she first said it. And even though I'm no fan of public school, it, it, uh, it initially I thought I, I got to think about this, but the more I've thought about it and especially seeing stuff like this NEA, just seeing how captured the system, the school system is the education process is I, I'm more and more for that. I'm more and more for just a, a, mm -hmm. Uh, a line between public funding. I mean, what does, what is public public? You can replace that word with government because it's just, it's the collective right. and whoever is in charge of the collective makes the rules for everybody. And so if it's public school, it's collective school, it's government school and the government is teaching your kids, whatever it wants to teach them. And in this case, it's global citizenship kind of stuff. And it's the, yeah. it's the, you know, I, I have a lot of sympathy for kids who are caught up in the gender thing. I, I think that it's the, the sort of tendency to go body dysmorphic as a young person is really strong for girls and boys to feel really uncomfortable in their own skin. They're just learning who they are. And, and it's a really, it's a very awkward time of a lot of tension and a lot of discomfort with, with yourself, your body's growing and changing so quickly. And I can see how seductive the, the, passion that these educators have around lgbtq 
stuff, which isn't about being gay anymore. It's not at all about being gay. It's about it's about not liking the form that you have and being embraced in your concept of yourself as something other than what you look like and what you physically are. And I can see how that would be really seductive to young people and and that it would sound like it really lines up with a lot of their concerns about their life and themselves. I think that educators have a responsibility to be honest. Um, we didn't have this problem until we had social media to this level, right? So I think that you have to tell a person, yeah, you know, getting a period sucks, you know, or, you know, or whatever else, if, if a kid asks you, but not that the alternative is to change your gender. Um, I think that we can be kind. And, and I, my biggest issue in the whole mess is that teachers are being kind to some students at the expense of others. That is, that's what I'm watching. I'm watching, I support this organization or this group so much that you will be shamed in my classroom. Mm -hmm. And I find that horrifying. Yeah. The little yeah. boy I was telling you about at the beginning he hasn't gone back to school in a week mm -hmm. because, you know, he knows that his teacher has written him, he's put him in a box. That's the equity thing though. That's equity. It's like, we've decided that these issues need to be emphasized. And in order to make sure that they are emphasized, we have to de-emphasize these other issues. And sometimes it's these people who fall into these categories, they need to be uplifted and the other people need to be suppressed in order to in order to really allow for the uplift of these groups and that makes teachers sadistic yeah that's what you it wanted does. to talk about today sadism yes and i have to add something because we're doing this series on parents whose children have been sort of sucked into the gender cult well the series is actually called parents surviving the gender cult so it's parents whose kids got sort of sucked in and then the parents were able to kind of get the kids to desist uh, and it's been very fascinating mm -hmm. and the one thing that they all share in common is that this so far I'll say we haven't done all of them yet but so far what they share in common is that the schools and the teachers have been a huge component for why this was even allowed to happen to begin with so the schools are the breeding ground right there for for, for all of these kinds of you know issues to spurt out of and so that's something that um when we talked at length with them what came from that was that the parents had to get very involved the parents had to be involved with the schools with the teachers and they had to be involved with directly talking to their own children about these issues and having uncomfortable and difficult conversations with them because the schools were supporting the ideology and the insanity and the parents had to bring in the sanity and the groundedness. So um, the schools definitely have some kind of overarching agenda that is pummeled through, that's funneled through mm -hmm. from whatever the top is or whatever the goal is. But that's a huge, it, it was made very clear to me in the past, but just hearing people speak from their specific experiences now mm -hmm. and what we're doing with these parents now it's very clear um, that schools are the breeding ground for all of this ideology. And that's scary. It's where kids spend most of their day, mm -hmm. most of their lives, most of the year. Someone in the chat, let's see, Danny says yes to a parallel culture. And then a guy in his room says confused by what is meant by a parallel culture. And so I thought that might be interesting. I, um, I think that it's, it was well, the idea that when these institutions are so corrupted and we still rely on the, the services that are being provided by the institutions, maybe it's up to people who are criticizing them to, to give up on criticizing and demanding that they change and start putting their efforts into actually creating alternatives so that people who don't want to give their, their time, their money, their children, their health over to corrupted institutions still have resources that they can access. And I, I think that, <clears throat> I, I like that idea a lot. I think that we do need to create alternative options for ourselves to the 
whatever you want to call it, the mainstream or whatever word you want to use for, for this um, larger picture. And yet I also, I'm not so sure that I think that a, a parallel culture is what needs to come. I think that we need to move away from the idea of monoculture and move back into um, into smaller communities that resource from yeah. within. Yes. So a, a lot of alternatives, kind of a, a more of a free market system. Yes. When I teach all, all of the people who teach at the co-op that I teach at, we are parents. We are parents who are passionate about a certain subject and we dig deep and we do not spend time thinking about the state standards on this. I get, I get the info and, and my goal for my son is I'm looking at institutes of higher education that haven't went off the rails or I'm looking, maybe I'm looking at, at like Harvard's literature program 20 years ago. I'm not looking at what's going on right now. Um, and the way that we, you know, we trade. So because I teach my, my discount in terms of him having another class is there the same thing. I'm, we need to be doing the same thing with gardening. Um, watching what's going on with Tyson, Tyson foods is alarming to me. And I just don't trust anymore. Mm. So what is going on now, with Tyson food? Tyson food is laying off a lot of Americans and saying that they want to replace them with 40,000 newcomers. So mm. illegal and documented immigrants, basically. When right. I see Tyson, I think, I think garbage anyway, because it's just, I mean, it, those massive factory, I, I am not a fan of factory farming in any way, shape or form. I just think it's, it's pretty hideous. Collectivist food That's sourcing, it. these bigs, ugh, I have no interest in that. That's not a thing I would buy for my family, but maybe the food services of America buys that maybe the, yes. the Cisco truck is buying that. And so it's in your restaurants. I don't know. That's when I see people who are constantly talking about equitable equity and bringing on their ESG, mm -hmm. I don't trust them to feed us when they think that we are the quote unquote biggest threat to America. Mm. So that's, that's where I go. I, I think that the, the less we can do, the less that we can do with, with things like that, the better. And I think we can do it better. I think an alternative culture we can do things better. We can we can teach more in depth. Mm -hmm. We can teach our kids to be truly resilient versus the fake resiliency stuff that we're hearing. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of things that we can do if we don't um, if we don't rely on on the people who hate us. Mm -hmm. Trebizon Music says, "What if I told you you can be in favor of eating meat and be against factory farms?" And I yeah, yeah totally. Sure. That's how I 100%. feel. I mean, we'll. We've a couple of times bought half of a steer from local farmers and ranchers. Mm -hmm. that, and then you can split it. You have it. Yeah. They'll, they'll send it to the butcher for you and you can divide it with friends. You can go in on it or you can just stock your freezer, big freezer. We buy locally yeah. sourced food product or um, meat products in my home. We don't do the grocery store. We don't do big distributors. Mm -hmm. We do single person distributor right. who has their own whatever they've got and kind of drives a truck around to people's houses and sells. I mean, that's kind of how we've been doing it for years now. So yes, we do eat meat, but we don't eat meat in the same fashion as a collective, you know, Tyson situation. Right. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, let's see. There was another comment I wanted to read. Um, well, okay. Ninja Kitty says, um, that he agrees about the establishment of alternatives, but the current system must pay a price for its failure. And then we can go back after time. What do you think about that? How does the, what does paying the price mean? How would that look? I don't know. Like a new Nuremberg. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen. I mean, I think ideally it might maybe in an ideal world, that would be the case, but I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like the parallel system has to develop and people just have to move on into it. And eventually that old system becomes antiquated and obsolete. But I've wondered if that's their goal. 
<clears throat> if their goal is to destroy Western Civ, yeah, and, and we are adopting worst practice after worst practice as we bring in restorative justice, as we bring in reading programs that aren't helping our kids read, if, as we bring in math that that makes kids cry because they they can see blatantly, they can see the social justice, and they're like, "You told me it wouldn't be in my school." We even have religious because I'm in Utah, right? So we have a religious course where they're bringing in SEL and kids are calling their parents and saying, what's going on? I thought this would be the one place where, where this would not happen. Right. And so I'm wondering if their, their goal, because these groups want America dismantled period. If we do it to ourselves, they cheer, they throw a party. If they do it, it's still a victory, mm-hmm. but, but how can you turn out schools that are just having disastrous responses from kids? We have more kids committing suicide than ever before. How can you keep turning this out unless it's intentional? It's intentional. Mm-hmm. So they want to dismantle our schools too. Meanwhile, they're saying that what they want is fully funded schools. So I don't know, Christine, did you see the, um, this is a little bit of a switch, but did you see the APA statement recently on which one uh, affirming evidence? It's called the APA policy statement on affirming evidence-based inclusive care for transgender, gender diverse, and non-binary individuals. Mm-hmm addressing misinformation and the role of psychological practice and science. Did you see mm-hmm. that one? I do believe that sounds familiar. Yeah. I think CTA put out a, we did a, a piece on that. So I was going to yep. share yep. the screen for that. Let's see. I thought this would be you guys seeing this statement right yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. And maybe I'll make it a little bit larger if it's kind of small. So I, I thought this was alarming also. It's like the rules on mental health have been completely rewritten and then embraced by the largest governing that's, bodies. That's, yeah, that's the thing. The only way for the this to really change is you have something that replaces it and it becomes eventually obsolete. These places are not going to... They're not going to reverse. They're not going to reverse course right now. We're too far in. And it's too far. It's there's too much damage. That's like that's you have to have people leaving their affiliation with the APA, starting other affiliations, and growing from that vantage point to where they eventually collapse or close in on themselves, and and it's over. But to yeah. go back and sort of rewrite all this and mm-hmm. redo it, and to 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 go back and say, oh gee, we were wrong in what we were you know promoting before, that's not going to happen. It's it's too. It's too much the core and fabric of what the profession has become now. It's been eaten from the inside out. Exactly. Exactly. This statement here that I've got highlighted. Can you see this? It says, whereas gender-based bias and mistreatment, e.g. discrimination, violence, non-affirmation, or rejection in response to gender diversity pose significant harm, including risk of suicide to the well-being of children, adolescents, Mm -hmm. adults, and families. Mm -hmm. So I just wow, this is, if, if I keep seeing this and it's not the, the studies don't bear this out for one thing, but even if it were so, when in the world do you say, oh my gosh, you're so fragile. Your mental health is so fragile that if I don't affirm you from outside, you could kill yourself. Well, I should just give you everything that you're asking for and not, not inquire as to the health and the resilience of the individual. And that's the manipulation that is being used. Look, even kids are learning to use that as a manipulation. Towards yes, they parents. are. Yes, they are. They're learning to say, if you don't do this, I'm going to kill myself. Yes, so, they are. Yeah. You know, it's just one big collusion uh, after the, after the next and parents mm-hmm. obviously are terrified that they don't want their child to be harmed. So of course they're going to listen to these experts. In fact, it's being used as proof of transgender identity. Yes. Well, if I weren't yes. transgender, I wouldn't be thinking about killing myself, yes. would I? Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's absolutely horrifying. Yeah, it is. I think this... they've changed 
that this is another word that's been weaponized is resilient. When they're talking about resilience, they are literally talking about being able to handle your cultural revolution. That's that's yeah. what they're talking about. They're talking about changing everything that you believe and, and making it through to becoming a good global citizen. That's the goal of resilience today. Why I why do they want so badly to medicalize this? Why that? Sterilization. Why is that? You think that's all it is? I think it's you think it's I just was, a population control thing? Well, so and this is a this is a whole nother can of worms, but I was listening to one thing on the W path and they were talking about how um we're doing the exact same things that Qatar did. So where they tell people it's not okay to be gay, so now you have to change your gender. Mm-hmm. So we're taking on a lot of Islamic practices and we're adopting them and calling them medical. So I do think that it's sterilization overall. Remember, like Bill Gates has said that we're overpopulated by X amount, right? Um, a lot of the climate people have said that we are yeah. we are overpopulated. Well, it's this been a thing way. that we've talked about for a long time too. I mean, I remember thinking I I I wanted to have a lot of kids, but I couldn't because of population, you know, I'm, those kind of things That's have been we grew up. Yeah, yeah. With that narrative. And Bill Gates is a huge contributor to big pharma, to all of these experiments on non-meat food items, things of that nature. He owns mm-hmm. big pieces of land where they're trying to harvest that. So mm-hmm. it's, you have so much power and control in the hands of so few, and that's very dangerous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a guy in his room says, honestly, all this doesn't make sense unless it's population control, plus the fact, what does it say here? Plus the fact one can buy a house, afford food. Oh, no one can. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. You will own nothing and you will be happy. We've all heard the, <laughs> yeah. that, that's the big, right? Yeah, yeah. It's you will not crazy. eat meat, you will be happy. All of that. And interestingly enough, one of the people that was on our show was a deep, transitioner so she had you know gone through the whole transitioning and then Mm detransitioned. and one of the things that she talked about health related wise for her was that um she needed to put meat back into her diet and when she was able to put meat back into her diet and she doesn't you know we're not talking about copious amounts but just putting meat back into her diet her mental health um pretty quickly improved and you know very quickly a lot of the issues she had with some of her other mental health conditions and she talked about this on the episode so it's something that she's been public about uh dissipated Mm -hmm. and so to kind of be you know holding that hostage taking that away from large groups of people um the intention is to make people sterile yes and to also make people very ill and Mm -hmm. and die off i mean we're living too long these are words that come from bill gates's mouth so not only are we overpopulated, we live too long. So well, how old is he? <laughs> Older than us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> is he gonna just elect to go into one of those uh made machines? It's it's so rules for me and not for me, right? We're yes. we're fun. Yeah. Yes. And the, the crazy thing is, is he doesn't just own he doesn't just own he owns everything. Yeah, he owns everything. He's, he own, he's huge into our education as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I don't, I haven't followed these dots, but it's interesting to the kind of, when you look at what's happening, you have to say, why is this happening? It's just, <laughs> it's so irrational. It's so, yes. it doesn't feel like an organic thing. So right. it's interesting. Uh, somebody in the chat says, these ladies are playing into the stereotype of centrists that they won't tackle real controversy. I'm like, all right, I guess that's <laughs> oh, interesting. Actually? I guess, I guess so. That's interesting. I don't, I don't know. I would love I to know. know what they think is real controversy. I was yeah. just about to ask that what real <laughs> controversy is. Yeah. I, in my circles outside of here, I am highly controversial to the yeah, point right. that I could get my license suspended yeah. speaking out in the way that I have before. So yeah. I like know what that means. I think it's uh, maybe, maybe he means making declarations and falling hard on one side instead of just having exploratory conversations i don't know mm. 
-hmm. I mean, I feel like the meat thing really comes down to weakening people because if you don't have protein, you don't have muscle. If you don't have yeah. muscle, then when we have a crazy amount of, of newcomers, maybe yeah. that's, would you prefer illegal aliens? When we have a crazy amount of these people coming over the border who have no respect for our country, we can't fight back. Yes. Illegal, okay, I'm, fine. Illegal aliens. Is, is that more controversial for you? <laughs> it's supposed like to be undocumented migrants. So here we go. Illegal aliens. There, yeah. No, now it. the new word is newcomers. Oh, newcomers. Really? So it's not even undocumented anymore. It's, it's wow. Newcomers. Wow. See, I missed that boat. Yeah. We're, we're paying for all, um, all medical needs for newcomers. Yes, we are. We're handing over money. We're handing over, you know, Stays at hotels for long periods of time. Yeah. The government's been supporting these hotels by dismantle the systems. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and and I think the, the exact example, if you want to go there, is Trump is about to lose everything, like four hundred and sixty-four million dollars, right? And he's supposed to lose every piece of his property. And what he had said was, "They're not after me; they're after you." So yeah, it's kind he's of right. A good example that. If we can have no justice, and this does tie in, go all the way back to the NEA discussion that we were having. Everything was justice, 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 justice. Yeah. But it's their definition of justice. And I sat there with my jaw dropped going, that can't be, that cannot be happening, but it is happening. And if it can happen to somebody that wealthy, how much is it going to happen to those of us who have a couple hundred thousand dollars in the bank? Right. Mm. So. You know, yeah, on a, <laughs> kind of a, on a funny note, and I, I guess related to all of this, um, I Benjamin recently found this forum where somebody had posted something about me. It was something on Reddit. I don't read Reddit. I've never been a Reddit person. Um, some forum where this person said, I just have to let you know about this lady. She's um a right wing grifter and she talks about all these right wing talking points and and uh she went to this school that is very clear about its social justice message and then she comes out like she's some kind of whistleblower because she discovered that it actually is and and it was this little screed and it was it was really quite amusing to me uh be, partly because if you read the thread and it wasn't a real popular thread it had like 20 comments on it or something the people responding, a few of them were like, oh, cool. I actually like her stuff. Thanks for showing her to us, you know? <laughs> so that was funny. But um, <laughs> the main body of the complaint was that I, that I was somehow being duplicitous by criticizing the school that I went to mm -hmm. when they were clearly about the stuff. And I, my response really is, well, it, even if that is the case and I don't, and it's not the case. And I've made that clear all the way along is that the reason this was so concerning, I would have just gone to another school mm -hmm. if I could have, I found CTA, I found Val mm -hmm. because I was trying to understand what the heck are they teaching in this school of counseling? Mm -hmm. Why are they doing this? This is bizarre. Mm -hmm. Is it just this school? And so I, I found a, an article written by Val, uh, Val Thomas in new discourses about mm -hmm. the exact same thing happening in England. Yeah. And I contacted her and I started to talk with other people who were also students and were also psychology professionals. Mm -hmm. And um, it was everywhere. And honestly, my point all along has been, even if it were just that one school, those people don't come out of that program and get some special license that says I'm a social justice LMHC. Right. They're, just, they're just a therapist. That's just mm -hmm. a normal person that you're going to not realize has been trained to think this one particular way mm -hmm. about how society should be structured and their role as an activist in making mm -hmm. you into a social justice person. Mm -hmm. And they're going heavily into the schools, heavily okay. into working mm -hmm. with children and with, with people who are vulnerable. And they're being told to see their, their clients and their patients as clinical opportunities to advocate for social justice, which is all that other stuff we just saw. So honestly, it doesn't matter if it was just that school. It doesn't matter. That's alarming enough. Yes. And it needs to be known, but it's not just that school. The clue channel says, threatened. Grifter, you, how, when? Well, if I can ever get, uh, if I ever make significant money off of any of this, <laughs> that'll be fabulous, but I don't right now. So 
don't know. It's just a lot of exposure and vulnerability, I but a lot of really good conversations. So, yeah, I, I think they're just threatened. The most, the funniest comment I heard last week was that a, a group of teachers got on and said, Carrie is horrible to buy pot kids. <laughs> what does that even mean? How are you horrible? You know, I, I really, I cannot figure that one out. <laughs> I, I see people as people. So when, um, yeah, my, my Sunday I spent with, uh, um, a Chinese asylum seeker and a Brazilian young woman who's helping me with campaign stuff. So I'm like, how exactly am I horrible? I like, but they you just see yourself as a, as a BIPOC. Do you act, do you see yourself? As I would never use that term. Yeah. So <laughs> I mean, I, and, and when they said it, I thought, do you mean Marxists? I mean, I avoid <laughs> Marxists if I can. So is that what you mean by that? But other than that, I'm like, I don't, I don't think of people that way. It doesn't mean yeah. I don't see them. You know, I know right, that Christine right. is this beautiful exotic woman, but <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. And they Correct. cannot wrap their head around it. And so for them to get on Reddit and make a thread about you, they're threatened. And and that's just it. And that's wonderful. I mean, talk about a victory. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's a small little group, these people are threatened. You're on the radar. Mm-hmm. That's how I look at it. So, yeah. Yeah. BIPOC. That's a terrible word. I, I, mean, I, I feel like I, I feel have like to I should be wearing a chicken means. costume. Like, <laughs> like pop, pop, pop. <laughs> yeah i can't remember who called herself a pock and she was being really ironic about it i can't remember who it was i was talking to who was like yeah i guess i'm a pock yeah i'm yeah. like it, it's you don't get to use language to define me you don't get to use language to define anyone like well it's stop. the euphemistic treadmill right like everything yes. becomes pejorative after it becomes commonplace Yes. So we have to keep creeping down like to the newcomers, you know, we, we, we keep on becoming increasingly, it's like, you have to re- recycle your euphemisms. Yeah. Right? Keep changing them out. It's political it's, correctness. You know Part of the issue too, that I've had with the pronouns is, you know, when you're talking about somebody or to somebody, you're, you're usually not like, if I'm sitting here with the three of you, I'm not going to refer to Leslie as her. I'm not going to refer to you as a pronoun. I'm going to talk to you and mm-hmm. I'm going to say to Carrie, Oh, you know, I agree with what Leslie said, whatever. I'm mm-hmm. going to use your name. It's this interesting power dynamic. I feel like when you're telling people that you would prefer to be called by these pronouns, most of the time, they're only going to be used when you're not in the room. So why That's are right. you giving somebody that kind of power or asking somebody to have that kind of, you know, control over your own agency in how you define yourself when yeah. you're not even in the, excuse me, when you're not even in the, in the freaking room, you're asking, you're enlisting them to yes. do reputational management for you. Yes. You're saying you go out, yes. I demand that you go out into the world and tell people, this is who I am. So we have yes. godlike narcissism. We have that level of of yes. that level of and I'm depending you will on respect you me above all else all the time. Yes. Mm-hmm. And it I think it divides people because I think it I, I don't think you can be in a room with someone like that for very long and not resent them. Mm-hmm. I don't like narcissists. No, of course not. And that's what you're. And it's you're handing over a lot of power and control. I don't care what you call me behind my back. I expect right. to be treated with respect to my face, and that's about it. But whatever, however else you want to talk about me, by all means. I mean, that's yeah. your choice to to mm-hmm. do that. There's something that's very, like, I, uh, giving something away, a power to somebody else when you're not even in the room, and expecting, mm-hmm. and then that's where the narcissism comes in, expecting that they're actually going to do that for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, And it's all, you know, it's interesting. It's all well and good for us to have these, these kinds of conversations. And for the people who watch these, these videos and for all the other people who agree with us, but we have the massive majority of American children in schools where this idea is being, yes. this is being said that this is normal and good. And, uh, and that this is the, and that people like us are, are being bigoted when we raise nuanced yes. concerns around these things. Yes. And I think one of you mentioned a little while ago about how the schools are actively talking to our kids. Yes, I've said are. this before, but I I'll say it again and again, like a broken record. I'll just say it forever. Your, 
your kids hear you. Yeah. And as a mother, and as I, I just, I guess my personality or whatever, it's just, I tend to be rather open and rather mm-hmm. non-judgmental. And I always mm-hmm. wanted my kids to be able to go out into the world and encounter things on their own. And I would speak subtly and offer my thoughts, but not really try too hard to push my ideas on my children. I really mm-hmm. didn't. I wanted to allow them the space to develop their own worldview. Mm-hmm. And that's just my natural kind of orientation. But I, it wasn't until my daughters were grown that I really realized every day I was putting them into a, pro, a place. I was dropping them off somewhere where the adults present weren't taking that same right. attitude. They were very actively pushing their worldview on my kids. And I had right. not mounted a good enough counter balance. I had not mm-hmm. offered enough of a counterbalance and I could have done more. And I, I don't think that you have to be really forceful, but I think you should engage in, in dialogue around these things. If you have to put your kids in school, if you don't feel like there's an option for you, 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 you owe it to them and to yourself to at least have conversations that offer another perspective, Mm -hmm. even if you don't want to be forceful about it. And Mm -hmm. I think that there's, I think, I still think it's valuable to allow people to grow into their own way of thinking about things, Mm -hmm. but talk to them. They hear you. They're, they're going to roll their eyes at you and act like they don't hear you. And then in a few years, you'll hear your words coming out of their mouth. Yes. Amen. That is so true. Mm -hmm. Yep, be intentional with what you do with what you do. Mm-hmm. Uh Carrie, I don't know if you want to talk very much about something that you have coming up. Do you want to give us any sure, kind I, of I'll give you a brief I'll a give you a brief um it is really important that we address the Trojan horses that are coming up. Um as, in education, a lot of times words are weaponized and I do have a lot of people that I've been speaking to about um, a subject being brought in schools. And I've I've talked about the subject before, it's ethnic studies. Um, But we're planning on doing a very large expose on it. And um, hopefully people will tune in. I think maybe if you guys are willing to in April, we mm-hmm. can start going through all of the materials, but it mm-hmm. it has like the sunrise movement, which literally says prepare for your cultural revolution and has um, some kids with some kids with the, the famous Chinese picture with their fists up in the air. And then some kids with today with their fists up in the air, there's stuff about kids being taught, being paid to be activists, $1,400 to go and tell their story of why they're angry. Um, there's a lot of sources on why ethnic studies is something different than what people think it is. So in April, we'll really start digging deep into that. That sounds great. I'd love to to do that, awesome. participate with you on, on that. Yeah, I would too. I'm really looking forward to that. That's alarming, but I think people really just need to see what's going on in the schools. Right. I don't know if there's hope for them, but there's, but people have options and yeah, I think that people don't realize that they do. And maybe, maybe it's also a cost benefit thing for many people like, well, it's not that bad, but if they see that it really is that bad, maybe it'll change their calculation. Yes. What I've seen from a lot of teachers, this is what I thought was interesting about Castle is that what I saw from a lot of teachers is I'm teaching this, it's boring, but it's not, what you're describing isn't quite here. And I'm sure, but I moved from a state that it was fully there and I'm watching the same steps being taken right now. So- Where did you move from, Carrie? What from state? Seattle. Oh, from, okay. Uh, yeah, from Washington. Washington. Yeah. So, um, and it was definitely there and, and things are here. Here it's more, less race and more gender, mm-hmm. but it's definitely here now but not to the level on Castle's website, they specifically call it um, syncretic. So they're, they're explaining, they're explaining how it's going to come in. Um, Oh gosh, the word is escaping my my mind, but incrementally. Are you guys seeing this castle website right now? I just thought I, before we go, I I thought we'd go into this a little bit because you talked about Uh, it. So this is castle. Systemic implementation. Yeah. What does castle stand for? The Collaborative for Social and Emotional Learning. Okay. And so this um, is SEL that's being taught in schools now. 
the speed yeah. dots in the town where I live, this is what they use. And this is what I, I don't know if this is across. So the what it, this is, is the umbrella. And okay. then they approve mm -hmm. just like a school when they get accredited capital approves what get um what's considered SEL. And absolutely, if you spend some time in the search, um, search what do you network, recommend we look at right now? So you can look it, this at, is again, it sounds very nice when you read it. It's like, oh, right. it's just helping you. What I go straight to is equity. Okay. And then, you know, flat out what, what the goal is. Do they have a, remember their research. So in search, search your networks, just type in equity. Oh, search here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Equity. Come on. Let's see. Okay. Here we go. Um, that integrates sent um this one you, here? you can do with yeah, any of them that would be fine yeah this one? Sure okay one. let's look at that oh there was another one that said reasons that that sel is important for equity okay. school so stuff that talks about equity and they specifically go into gender and um illegal immigration but they oh. Social competencies, you guys, these are scary things. These are, do you, these are about um, um, behavioral control. Where do you yes. see social competencies? Um, The first paragraph. Okay. Um, when students engage in social emotional learning, they develop um, oh, the right social there. and emotional competency. Competencies, like multicultural competency. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot. It's worth digging into probably at another time because it's yeah. Really amount of um okay. info but if you if you dig into it you will see that the end goal is all focused on gender they used race to get into school mm. um but it all comes into gender thing oh interesting interesting this is oh yeah they're trauma sensitive schools that. that sounds like you're therapizing everybody in the school what is trauma sensitive yes, that's schools? exactly what that is yes i yes. it's you're they're therapizing everybody in the school so the whole umbrella there the 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 lens is through kind of assuming that there's been that everybody that attends the school has been through some sort of trauma so the lens wow. through which they teach supposes that everybody there has been through trauma and this is where they're training teachers on how to do mindfulness techniques in class and meditation in class and Trauma, that trauma yeah, informed care, things that they're not qualified to do and things that may not be the most helpful, even if they were trying to help a kid who's experienced major amounts of trauma. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's all in like, a, you know, the teachers, the teacher's mental health toolkit online. I mean, well, it's, it's, that, yeah. right here, look at this here. It yeah. says, so experiences of trauma may include physical, sexual, and emotional abuse, family and community violence, natural disasters, wars, that all of that. Okay. Yes. And then mm -hmm. the, and the ongoing cumulative impact of poverty, racism, and oppression. Yes. Now on oppression, remember that the goal of ethnic studies or the goal of critical race theory being taught to your kids, either one is to show them how the they oppression. are oppressed. You are or oppressed. Every person yeah, is both. oppressed. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of universal. This is very circular. Yep. Yes. And mm. their experts are themselves. And so. you know, in situations like this too, if you don't have the most traumatic story in the classroom, then you're not going to fit in. So they also use that as a way to, you know, I mean, there's definitely a lot of control behind that, but you know, imagine if the kids that get the most attention are the ones who, let's say, have, have disclosed that they've experienced the most amount of trauma. What does that do to the other kids? Well, it starts to either alienate the other kids from getting engaged in any kind of learning or mm -hmm. more, more on the likely side, they start coming up with the, what about me and my trauma, whether or not they've actually even experienced anything that would fall into that category. Hmm. So it's a huge problem when you have a trauma-informed school and everybody there, especially if it's a public school and everybody there is in a different kind of place. Plus you don't have them being taught by therapists or being taught by teachers who don't have the same level of, listen, mindfulness and all of that's great. 
for certain people in certain contexts, in certain situations. You can't just bring that into a classroom and expect that every child in there is going to, you know, have a grounded and, and you know, experience that brings them into the present. Kids that have severe trauma don't necessarily do well with mindfulness. Mm -hmm. There, there's a lot of reasons why that can be close your, close your eyes and picture, you know, a beach and you have a kid that's had a horrible experience at the ocean. Maybe they're, you know, tormentor, their, their perpetrator would, would take them to the beach and do awful things to them. How do you know that that's not going to be extremely dysregulating? You have no clue because you don't know their backgrounds and you're not supposed to be responsible for that part of this. You know, one of the things that, that alarmed me when I was in, when I was in graduate school studying counseling was the quality of the, mm, I guess the other students, there were some that were really, just really seemed like strong people that were going to be good counselors, but a lot of them seemed like very fragile activist minded people. And so I was really alarmed thinking of all these people going out and being working with people as an authority, as some kind of mental health authority. Yes. And even worse are a bunch of teachers who took a, a basic, like what some training seminar on trauma informed care. And now they're applying these kind of with their toolkit from online yeah, they got toolkit. online exactly and so they're going to apply these therapeutic interventions across the board without Correct. taking the time to really evaluate and get to know the individual that they're working that's with. that's what's happening in my county and that's what where i got involved I mean, years ago now if you look at when i got involved maybe three years ago it was because i saw that they were using these toolkits that they were getting online to perform interventions in class that were mental health related when it was teachers who are not trained and shouldn't be responsible for that to begin with. That's when I actually became very involved in what was happening at the schools. And then the gender, of course, issues Mm -hmm. flourished from there, but that was a huge issue. It's very dysregulating. We, and even a care center I worked at, you know, for a, a while where kids would just drop in you know, they drop in, they come and tell you some horrible story about what's happening to them or what happened to them. Then they're expected to go back to class in that kind of condition. No. Mm -hmm. So they sit there all day long. Then their friends want to come in and support, you know, their, their other friend. And then that gets them to start opening up about their own trauma. And it ended up to where these kids were missing periods of school Mm -hmm. a day, one, two periods a day, every single day of the week. And there was and learning that this is how you get out of doing things that are hard. You get out of doing things by being a victim. Correct. Yes. You get out of doing things by by being a victim, things that are hard by being a victim. That's exactly right. And I had such a difficult time with that. The word Um, trauma has become meaningless. Yeah, pretty much. It's so watered down at this point. Everybody has a trauma history. Their argument is that because we were locked down for two years of COVID that we all have trauma now. Well, yeah. I mean, it was incredibly destabilizing, but sure. trauma yeah. is, is a meaningless phrase at this a meaningless word at this point. I mean, what does that even mean? Right. People, life, because it, the definition is that it means anything it, that the person who's, you know, the recipient of it says what it means. I mean, you each determine what it means. So that's why it doesn't really hold a lot of value mm-hmm. because now. Well, it's, a, it's an attempt to, to exceptionalize the normal. Yeah. Right. You know, I mean, we have life is suffering. That's been life is suffering. We we experience pain. We experience loss. We will not, none of us gets out alive. That's right. We are all going to, are you Buddhist? No, I'm not Uh, Buddhist, but I do. I have, I do think there's a lot of wisdom in Mm -hmm. Buddhist philosophy, Mm -hmm. but yeah, life is suffering. That just made me think of. Yes. But yet progressives are teaching that we we are not made to suffer, that there Correct. should be no suffering, that we should alleviate suffering. I'll tell you one more thing about social and emotional learning that recently came out. Um, they take first graders and they have changed their time of eating. So they push it back about an hour and a half. So, so they're the eating kids, later? Yeah. Aww. So that the kids begin to feel hunger pains. Then they sit on top of their desks and they meditate. Okay, so there's religious people who aren't going to be okay with that. 
but they're six year olds. We're talking about six year olds. Six year olds. They're meditating, and while they're meditating, the teacher is chanting to them something along the lines of, "It's not good for anyone to feel hungry," and we can do our part in making sure that no one in the world is hungry by only eating these foods. And oh my god, and, uh huh. It goes for about a week. And um, Insane. or they wow, they they're they're tying out. an intellectual uh, cognitive lesson with a body experience in a way to really encode a powerful memory. And yeah. telling the kids that as long as they're t- you know they don't want they don't want anyone else to feel the way their tummies feel. Like <laughs> that was the one that just kind of made my hand shake <laughs> as I'm reading and I'm it's just, just it's it's it and they're crazy. bragging about it. That's infuriating. Yes. Oh my goodness. Okay. There's so much. <laughs> well, this is quite the black pill. Um, how do you guys have anything positive that you want to say or anything good going on in your lives that you well, can share before I we, think, uh, well, yeah. we're doing a critical therapy and I'm really happy about because the series we're doing on parents who survived the gender cult. Um, it's very, very hopeful, mm-hmm. um, because those parents have been able to kind of get their kids to dis- to desist and, you know, start kind of getting back to some semblance of, of sanity, I should say. Um, and that's very hopeful because uh, oftentimes I think it feels like this big black hole that we're not going to be able to get out of, but um, those parents have been very inspiring. So I'm excited about that. We're, I think we're doing about six episodes for this series total. Um, in addition to some other people and topics, other topics that we're, we're doing, but I'm really excited about this one. So um just tune in can you in. give the the link to your website can you say where you guys can be found yeah so youtube um our channel is at cta podcast or you can go to critical therapy org, and all of our episodes are usually posted there and if you click on one it'll take you to the youtube channel awesome thank you ninja kitty for asking he, i think he's going to put those up in the chat that's great Thank you. Awesome. I'm going to praise Christine's last podcast. That's that is the most hopeful thing because this mom says towards the end, my daughter needed a hero. I became that hero. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that fits for everything. So mm-hmm. beautiful work on that, on that episode. It was Thank really you. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That's We're really lovely. enjoying it. Yeah. Very hopeful. Yeah. And anything else going on for you, Carrie, that you want to talk about? I'm I'm just fighting the good fight. I know that it's hard to hear the black pill stuff, but if we know we're better equipped. So um, yes. that's that's just the way that I think about it. Mm. Well, for me it's it's spring and it's beautiful here. Today is <laughs> kind of gray actually, but it's been beautiful and sunny the last few days and it's so nice to see things starting to sprout. And I've just planted a bunch of strawberries. Nice. So I'm excited about strawberries this year and um, the cherry blossoms are, are blooming. I'm sure you remember that Carrie from this area, how beautiful that is. Yeah. And so there's something happy. I hope everybody has a good day and thank you so much for joining us in the chat. And it's been great to talk with the two of you ladies. As always. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye. You too.